Chapter 16 of Bunny Brown and His Sister Sue at Christmas Tree Cove. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Sean McGahey and Sarah. Chapter 16 Overboard. Miss Brown was used to seeing things happening to Bunny and Sue. They were lively children, and getting into mischief fully as often as other tots of their same age did, it was not unusual to have one of them hurt slightly. So when Sue ran up to her mother and began to cry out about Bunny's toe, Miss Brown looked down the beach where she had left the two children playing. She saw Bunny dancing around in the shallow pool of water left there when the tide ran out. As he danced on one foot, Bunny held the other up in the air, and he was crying something which his mother could not hear. Sue, asked Miss Brown as she hurried down the slope leading to the beach proper. Did Bunny step on a broken bottle and cut his toe? No, mother, it isn't Dan that, answered the little girl. I don't know just what it is. I was making a little house on the sand, and Bunny was waiting in the water. All of a sudden he yelled and told me to go and get you because there was something the matter with his toe. He probably cut himself, said Mrs. Brown, and she began to search in her pocket for an extra handkerchief. It would not be the first time Bunny or Sue had suffered a cut foot because of stepping on a sharp shell or a piece of glass while in waiting. But when Mrs. Brown and Sue reached the edge of the little pool in which Bunny was hopping about on one foot, holding himself up by leaning on a piece of driftwood he had picked up and was using as a crutch, his mother saw what the matter was. "'Take it off my toe! Take it off my toe!' cried Bunny. "'It's a big pinching crab,' said Mrs. Brown. "'Oh, Bunny, I'm so sorry. Come out of the water and I'll make it let go of you. Come out!' By this time, Sue also had seen the cause of the trouble. A big crab had been caught when the tide went down and was in the pool of water, which, surrounded by sand, was like a little lake. Bunny must have stepped on the creature when wading. It had nipped the big toe of his left foot and was holding on, though Bunny had raised his foot out of the water as far as he could. "'Come here, Bunny. I'll get him off for you,' his mother called. I can't come. How am I going to walk on one foot? And Bunny howled, for the crab was pinching hard. Can't you skip as we do when we play hopscotch? asked Sue. Maybe, her brother answered. He was about to try it, and his mother was just going to tell him that a better way would be to dip his foot back in the water when the crab might swim away, when the pinching creature decided to let go anyhow. It loosened its claws and dropped with a splash into the puddle of water. Oh, he's gone! He let go my toe! cried Bunny, and then he ran up the sandy shore as fast as he could go. Let me see where he pinched you, said Mrs. Brown, when Bunny had reached her side. Is it bleeding? Yes, I guess it is. And maybe he pinched my whole toe off, said Bunny, almost ready to cry. He held up his bare foot, and his mother looked at the toe. It was quite red, but the skin was not broken, and there was no blood. Is it, is it off? asked Bunny, his voice trembling. No, you silly boy, it isn't even bleeding, laughed his mother. Well, it, it felt as if it was off, said Bunny. I don't like crabs. No, they aren't very pleasant when they nip you, agreed his mother. But this one took such a big pinch, and his claw was so much over your toenail that he really did very little damage. You'd better not wade in that pool any more. I won't, decided Bunny. He sat down and softly rubbed his toe where the crab had pinched him. As Mrs. Brown had said, there was no blood. Though it does not take much of a nip from even a small crab to break the skin and cause a bleeding, and sometimes the pinch of a crab where it does draw blood becomes very sore. However, Bunny was well out of this adventure, and when he had got over his fright, his mother took him and Sue up under the shady umbrella and gave them some lunch. 
but I don't want any more crabs to bite me, said Bunny. The remainder of the day was spent in a happy fashion, though Bunny waited in no more pools. I'm glad the crab didn't pinch me, said Sue, as she wriggled her toes in the soft sand, because my foot's littler than Bunny, she went on holding it near to his, and maybe the crab would have taken hold of two of my toes and bitten them all off. Oh, I think that wouldn't have happened, said Miss Brown. A crab doesn't really want to nip children just for fun. They'll get away from you if they can. But if they think you're going to hurt them, they'll open their claws and pinch. Bunny must have stepped on the one that took hold of his toe. Maybe I did, said Bunny. I stepped on something, and I thought it was a clamshell, but it wiggled out from under my foot, and then my toe was grabbed. When Bunny and Sue went back to the bungalow that night, they saw Bunker Blue busy at work, on a small boat at the dock, which was at the end of the walk leading down from Bark Lodge, as the place was named, for it was made of logs with bark on. What are you doing, Bunker? Sue called to him. I got bit by a crab, announced Bunny, not giving the fish boy time to answer. He held on to my toe, and I lifted him right out of the water, same as we catch crabs on a string and fish head. Is that so? asked Bunker as he went on hammering away at the boat. It was another craft than the one Mr. Brown had hired for the use of his family. What are you making? Bunny wanted to know. Satisfied now that he had told the story of the crab. Oh, I'm making a little sailboat, answered Bunker. A man on the other side of the cove, where your uncle Tad and I were fishing today, sold me this boat cheap, and I'm going to rig up a sail for it. I don't want to row around all summer, so I'm going to sail. Oh, can we go with you? asked Sue. I can help you sail, can't I, Bunker? questioned Bunny. Yes, if your mother lets you, was the answer. After supper, Uncle Tad helped Bunker put the sail on the boat. It was not a very large boat, nor did it have a very large sail, but the fish boy said it would do for cruising about the cove. "'May we sail with him, mother?' asked Bunny the next day when Bunker announced that the boat was ready for a trial. "'Is it safe?' asked Mrs. Brown of the tall lad. "'I think so,' he answered. "'I'll give it a try out by myself first, though.' Bunny and Sue watched Bunker Blue sailing to and fro in Christmas Tree Cove, and finally he headed back for the dock. "'I'll take Bunny and Sue out now if you'll let them come with me,' said Bunker to Mrs. Brown, who, with the children, was watching the trial of the new sailboat. "'Very well, but be careful and don't go too far,' cautioned the children's mother." Delighted by the prospect of a ride before the wind around the cove, Bunny and Sue got into the boat. There was just about room enough for three. Bunker had rigged up a rudder on the boat, and there was a small centerboard in the middle to keep the craft from tipping over in a hard blow. All aboard, cried Bunny, pretending to help Sue to her place. All aboard, answered Bunker as he pulled over the tiller and let the boat swing out from the dock. Then, for some time, the children sailed about the cove, while Mrs. Brown watched them from the bank. Mr. Brown was to come up to the cove that night on the evening train to stay for several days. As Mrs. Brown was watching, she saw something dark slide suddenly over the side of the sailboat, and at the same time she heard Sue's screams and saw Bunker let go of the sail and make a grab for an object in the water. Bunny has fallen overboard, cried his mother, springing to her feet and running down to the dock. Uncle Tad, come quickly. Bunny has fallen overboard. End of chapter 16